this guy's garage. Like and subscribe. And I wanted to put on the record that the government of Canada continues to assert and maintain uh, all of its claims of solicitor, client privilege in respect of all legal advice and opinions. Minister Lametti's attendance here uh, as a witness is not a waiver of any claims of privilege by the government of Canada, which he has an obligation to protect. We will be objecting to, and Minister Lametti will be refusing to answer all questions that would delve into areas of solicitor client privilege. So I just wanted to put that on the record at the front end, um, and hopefully examinations um, can be appropriately tailored to keep the objections to a minimum. Morning, sir. Good morning. Uh, for the record, my name is Brendan Miller. I'm counsel to Freedom Corp, which is the entity representing the protesters that were in Ottawa in January and February. Good to meet you. 2022. First, uh, Professor Lemendi, it's actually an honor to meet you. I've used some of your articles in my litigation practice, so uh, I'm a fan. In any Thank event, uh, sir, we'll just get right into this. Uh, as the Attorney General and uh, the Minister of Justice, your powers and duties come from the Department of Justice Act. That's correct? Um, and in part the common law, so the Department of Justice Act in particular with respect to the, the formal rules. Right. And under Section 4 of that Act, uh, your powers and duties include that you shall see that the administration of public affairs is in accordance with the law. Is that correct? That's correct. And under B, it also has you as the uh, superintendents of all matters uh, coming within the administrative justice federally. Is that fair? That's fair. There are nuances in terms of how that plays out, but yes, that's fair. And then under Section 5B, uh, you shall have the regulation and conduct of all litigation for or against the Crown or any department. Is that right? That's correct. And that, of course, includes the Department of Justice, including the legal team here today. Uh, indeed, it does. Yes. And you might have, uh, I'm sure you've got it, that in a ruling yesterday, uh, Commissioner Rouleau uh, ruled that the Department of Justice nor the parties were able to produce any legal authorities uh, for the GOJ to redact records on the basis of parliamentary privilege. Are you aware of that? Um, I'm not particularly aware of that. that normally, the parliamentary uh, privilege is dealt with uh, by others, uh, such as the clerk, uh, and that's an ongoing discussion. So I'm, I'm not aware of the particulars okay. of that rule. So what Justice Rouleau ruled was that there's just no authority for redacting documents on the basis of a parliamentary privilege. So I'm wondering if under your powers, under section five sub D of the Department of Justice Act, if you can direct that the Department of Justice uh, release all the records that they've provided in this proceeding uh, with the redactions for parliamentary privilege unredacted. Mr. Commissioner, I don't think that's an appropriate question. It doesn't suit the purposes, uh, fall within the purposes for which Minister Lametti is here to testify. My friend is well aware that you have made a ruling and this is something to be dealt with through the normal commission processes and not through a witness. Very well. And uh, from being a lawyer and a law professor and attorney general, uh, I take it you have an intimate understanding of solicitor client privilege, is that correct? A reasonably good one, yes. And of course you also have an understanding of section 39 of the Canada Evidence Act and cabinet confidence, is that fair? Again, a reasonably good understanding. Now, one of the documents produced by DOJ uh, in the record, and I, I'm assuming it was just produced to, to prove it was done, is the redacted legal opinion. It's just uh, the document itself that was given to Cabinet. It's fully redacted. But, uh, of course, you agree that uh, Cabinet received a legal opinion about the Emergencies Act. Is that fair? I Mr. will not confirm. Or I'm going to object to this okay. question. It gets into areas of solicitor-client privilege. Okay. Um, now, we have evidence in this proceeding uh, from the Privy Council Office and Ms. Jody Thomas that the Government of Canada's position is that, of course, as you said, that Section 2 of the CSIS Act has a different meaning and that it has a different scope based in its reference in the Emergencies Act. That's right? I will neither confirm nor deny that. I, I spoke uh, giving, giving an opinion based on the right. text of the Act. That is, as I was careful to point out at the time, that that was uh, neither a waiver nor a confirmation of, of any uh, advice that was given uh, based on that text and based on the facts that were given. I, I took great care to not link the two, uh, and I have, I have no comment on what Ms. Thomas said. I will leave that to our lawyers uh, to uh, 
discuss in final argument. Right. And uh, but you've testified to the same thing, that you're going to leave it to counsel. And I take it that as a lawyer in preparing for your testimony here today, uh, you reviewed all the relevant records and documents that you had access to and in your possession and power to obtain, fair? I reviewed documents, yes. Yeah. In the record in the proceedings and the documents that you reviewed, um, and the ones that we have available unredacted, can you point to me of a document, of a record in this proceeding that existed prior to the invocation of the Emergencies Act, where there's any recording whatsoever or discussion that there is a broader scope of Section 2 of the CSIS Act when it is applied to the Emergencies Act. Can you point me to a document that says that? Mr. Okay. Commissioner, I think that's an inappropriate question. There are thousands and thousands of documents in the record. Um, it just It's unfair to the witness. I'll, I'll then narrow it down. Um, was there any such document that you reviewed in preparing for your testimony here today that existed prior to the invocation of the Emergencies Act that it was discussed, that isn't subject to sister-client privilege, that it was discussed that uh, there was a broader scope of Section 2 as it applied in the Evidence Act? Once again, that's, that's a question that's asking me uh, to effectively divulge legal arguments. Um, I, I remind my, my learned friend that it is very odd to put a lawyer on the stand, I'm really here as a, a cabinet minister in order to speak to facts. I know. Uh, and it is, it is uh, to some extent uh, an obligation for me to try to answer questions as best I can. But right. you're asking me to answer questions as a lawyer, and it, is, it would be remarkable to put a lawyer up on the stand in the middle well, of the Well, I, I understand, so. sir. And so, again, I just, I would like the question answered. Did, did you see any documents that talked about this interpretation that you're discussing uh, that existed prior to the invocation of the Emergencies Act. Again, I'm going to rely on, on solicitor-client okay. privilege there. And, sir, as the Attorney General uh, of the country, um, of course, uh, you have ultimate authority both to and to advise on uh, when to waive solicitor-client privilege, do you not? That's not true. Uh, Solicitor-client privilege is not mine to waive. It is up to the, the governor and council to waive. Right, but you advise on that. I could advise on that, yes. Right, okay. I would remind council that this is a, this is a right that the Supreme Court of Canada has said is a quasi-constitutional right. It is fundamental for good governance, uh, as it is fundamental for any uh, relationship between a solicitor and a client, that the solicitor be able to give full and frank legal advice including all its warts, uh, to a client. Um, in my case, the client is, is uh, the government of Canada and my cabinet colleagues, and the Department of Justice needs to be able to tell truth to power. In order to do that, I have to rely, I have a responsibility to rely on solicitor-client privilege, and the Supreme Court has effectively held no, that I'm, this is I'm, one of the highest forms. I'm, I'm not going to ask you that question again. Um, but I take it, uh, you know, uh, as an eminent law professor, an academic, with the many publications you have, that between February 13th and 14th, when you were considering this decision, you didn't personally, personally believe that Section 2 of the CSIS Act was any different in the Emergencies Act, did you? Again, I am, you're asking me to give legal advice no, or, I'm asking or, or advice that I might have given uh, to, uh, to the governing council. No, I understand. But I'm, no, I'm asking you what you personally believe as a member of cabinet. I am, I am in this case, uh, I can't distinguish that because of the, the, the dates and the context that you've given me. You're asking me to apply facts to law. And, and I, I can't do that without breaching solicitor client privilege. I, I'm not understand. sure you've understood the point. I understand. But, sir... We all know as lawyers that sometimes we give advice and it's not followed. And I'm not asking you to tell me what you advised. I'm asking you as a member of cabinet, was it your personal belief that on February 13th or 14th, did you personally believe that Section 2 of the CSIS Act had a different scope in the Emergencies Act as you as now being argued? Was that your personal belief? Mr. Commissioner, the problem here is that um, asking that personal belief of the Attorney General 
of Canada inherently gets into matters of solicitor-client privilege. I object to the question. Sir, I, I'm asking his personal belief as also a member of cabinet. I'm and not sure. I mean, he, he's not a, he's there as attorney general, as a member of cabinet. That's the problem, I think, that okay. we're running into. But again, you understand under Section 4 of the Department of Justice Act, it's your duty to see that the administration of public affairs is carried out in accordance with the law. Absolutely. And, and if you were to ask me the, the factors that were going on, the events that were going on across Canada that I deemed to be important as a member of that cabinet, I would, ask, I would answer the question. But you're asking me to interpret facts through the law, which is the kind of advice an attorney would give, and I won't do that. Right. And I don't want to know about what you would give as an attorney, um, but with respect to what you actually gave. But when you're advising on whether to waive solicitor client privilege, what factors do you consider? Again, I am, uh, you're asking me a hypothetical question. Uh, I would, uh, in probably virtually all cases, advise that it shouldn't be waived uh, simply because it is such an important fundamental principle. But you can agree that it's been waived in the past by the government. I only know of one example. Okay. Now, just uh, one you're last. You're going to have to wrap up. Yeah, yeah. I am. And just uh, dealing with Section 39 of the Evidence Act, we just had that. Uh, I had mentioned that. Uh, you understand that, of course, Section 39 of the Evidence Act applies to cabinet confidences. Uh, would you read me the provision of the Act or show me the provision of the Act, please? It, it's I get 38 and 39 mixed up. Okay. No, it's... Please show me. Um, I don't have the ability to show it to you. But Section 39... Uh, it speaks to uh, confidence as the, the Queen's Privy Council. Can we agree about that? I really would like to see the text. Okay. It's, Again, these, there are a number of right. uh, numerous texts that I read on a day-to-day -day basis, and I would like to see the text. Can you agree with me that it's your understanding that a, a cabinet confidence is something, or a record that's a cabinet confidence or has a cabinet confidence in it, is, is something that cabinet would have knowledge of? that someone if, within cabinet would have knowledge of the contents of the document. Cabinet, cabinet confidence is, is wider than simply uh, what is discussed at cabinet and the, 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 the recorded uh, version of those. But with, with that caveat, yes. Okay, and so with the section 39 redactions that are in all the correspondence between staffers, everything the staffers say, cabinet would have knowledge of that then. That, uh, that's, again, uh, that's a legal opinion you're asking me to give on a controversial point. Thank you very much, sir. It's been a pleasure. Thank you.